They held one another's hands. They were stunned. When somebody dies, you go through shock. Then you go through anger. Then you go through mourning. Then you're back to anger. Then you end up with shock. That's the only way you, I think that it works. I had warned every single member of this family that Michael's drug abuse was going to harm him and that one day, Michael Jackson was going to wake up dead. Superstar Michael, Michael Jackson, Jackson has died, died this afternoon at UCLA, UCLA Medical, Medical Center. Center. He was 50 years old. This is hard. Um, my brother, the legendary king of pop, Michael Jackson, passed away on Thursday, June 25th, 2009 at 2.26 p.m. There was a sort of stillness, a silence. You wanted him to have to repeat that just to make sure that you heard it right. The king of pop, Michael Jackson, is dead. It is believed he suffered cardiac arrest in his home. However, the cause of his death was unknown until results of the autopsy are known. That day, I was walking around in a haze. It was as if I was uh, on another planet in another world. I was stunned. I received calls from as far as South Africa, Turkey, China. He was mourned around the world. We all kind of grew up with him, and I think that that's why it became so personal. I just, I wanted to wake up and somebody tell me this isn't real. This has got to be the worst day of my life right now. Uh -huh. He was part of my life at 44. He was part of my entire life. Michael Jackson made culture accept a person of color way before Tiger Woods, way before Oprah Winfrey, way before Barack Obama. Michael Jackson was a trailblazer. About 4 o'clock this afternoon, Robbery Homicide Division was notified of this incident and directed by the chief of police to come out and handle the death investigation. The LAPD found lots of different vials of medication prescribed to him and prescribed to people in alias names. I was made aware of my name being listed on the prescription list, and I just... I lost it. Why would someone do that? That really made me feel used. I'm here to announce that the coroner has concluded the autopsy for Mr. Michael Jackson. The cause of death has been deferred, which means that the medical examiner has ordered additional testing. There was no indication of foul play on the body of Mr. Jackson. Some family members felt differently. Latoya said that her brother had injection marks all over his body, in between his toes, on his neck, in his fingers, in his groin. These are major points where drug abusers inject themselves with drugs. The family really have appeared to take a stand that someone caused Michael Jackson's death. This was not natural causes. That's why do you still believe, you still believe in the conspiracy? It's murder. I think someone did it. That's my opinion. Prior to January 1984, Michael Jackson never took any kind of drugs. After he was burned in the soft drink commercial, things changed. He was severely burned. He was severely hurt, a lot more so than the public initially thought. They tried to do skin grafts and hair transplants and things like that, but when you have a scar like that and that big, there's not much you can do. That was a very sad thing because it hurt him a lot. He told me that when he was offered pain medication, he turned it down. He didn't want it, but then the pain was so bad that he decided to take it. The drugs came as a surprise to a lot of people. I wouldn't call it a straight-out addiction as I would an over-dependency. But then in 1993, the first allegations of child molestation happened. And that's when I think the addiction began. 
You had such a huge, huge star being hit with allegations so salacious, so disgusting, that naturally it brought worldwide attention. It was like a nail driven into the solar plexus. They categorized him as a child molester. He was somebody who had an odd sort of a attitude, affect, appearance, and it sort of confirmed to a lot of people that he was a strange, strange fellow. And I think from that point on, he was often taking a lot more medication than he needed to. It started slowly and gradually built up where Michael couldn't function without them. He had checked into rehab several times unsuccessfully. Every time he'd be let out, just days or weeks later, he'd become dependent again. Ten years went by, and just as he was beginning to sort of emerge from that trauma, the next set of allegations occurred. And this time, it ended up in a trial. And I watched this sort of disintegration of this, of this person take place. To have to withstand a worldwide media event, which continued to say, Michael's guilty, Michael's no good, he's a bad person, he's a monster, this had to kill him. We saw a very, very embattled and beat up Michael Jackson during that trial. And you looked at his eyes, and you, you knew that this was a person who was heavily under the influence of something. By the end, when all of the not guilty verdicts came down, he was a shell of the man that we first saw. Frank DeLeo told me on verdict day, he's not going to get over this. I think that Frank was right. I don't think Michael ever got over it. Apparently, Michael kept reaching for pain killers. And, you know, after a while, obviously, it wasn't working. He was trying to find a way to manage his chronic pain emotionally and physically. So he graduated to the next um, more powerful thing. And it continued to be a gradual process where he would climb the ladder with different powerful drugs. I've seen reports and I have talked to sources that say it was not unusual for him to take dozens of pills, 40, 50 pills a day. Incredibly, this is an amount that would kill a normal person if they took it. But I believe his body was so used to the medication, he needed more and more every single day. Everyone in the family was concerned. Everyone, from Joe Jackson to Latoya to Jermaine, everyone had expressed their views on the subject matter. So it wasn't something which was hidden. It was something which was talked about. But nevertheless, it wasn't anything that anyone could do anything about. They were worried. They didn't have the specifics. They didn't know what they were dealing with. But they knew that something was wrong, and they suspected that it was drug-related but they couldn't really figure it out because they didn't have access to him all the time. And they tried. I did talk to the family about intervention. I talked to his father, his elder sister, Reby, and I spoke to his younger brother, Randy. I told him that I strongly believed that Michael was abusing drugs. All of us was on the same page, and we was getting ready to move in and try to do something about it. I think Michael Jackson just sort of wore his body out from work and stress and medication for years and years and years. Add that, anorexia, lupus, vitiligo, all these autoimmune disorders, it really is a wonder he lived as long as he did. It's been about a week the last time I saw him. He was living then, yes. Okay. Press okay. conference is over now, thank you. After Michael Jackson died, his father would come out and backslap with the reporters and do little interviews. And you're supposed to be in mourning. This is a time of mourning, not a time to get your face on camera. But that's what Joe did. Three days after Michael Jackson dies, his father is on the red carpet at the BET Awards. The last couple of days, I know it's been really tough for you guys. And? Yeah, yeah it has. It has been really tough. Remember, we just lost the biggest star in the world, superstar in the world, so it's been tough. I believe that Michael's death, while it was a shock to him, created in Joe this need to get out there and say, look, I'm still in the music business. But I want to make this statement. This is a real good statement here. Marshall and I 
after we owned the record company called Tell Ranch, Ranch Records. What an inappropriate thing to do. I mean, if you wanted to go to the BET Awards and be honored as the father of Michael Jackson, that's fine. But that's not what Joe Jackson went for. Joe seized the opportunity at the time to announce something that he had coming up. And it was probably inappropriate to do that. But I don't think he meant no harm. I know Joe took his son's death hard. He mourned and grieves in his own way. But he was not going to be on TV crying. Joseph Howard grieved different. He didn't want to talk about it. I really think that most of the problems that Michael had with Joseph had to do with his childhood. When Michael became the star of the Jackson 5 and had to really perform and be on his mark, Joe expected an adult. Joe expected Michael Jackson, a 10 or 8-year-old boy, to perform like an adult, and Michael did. But he did it with a lot of trepidation, a lot of fear, a lot of intimidation by his father. Joe Jackson was on him. Sing longer, dance faster, be better, keep working, go at it. He practiced us with a belt in his hand. And if you miss a step, expect to be, uh, and he would tear you up. Joseph had a big vision for his kids, but his methodology was kind of screwy. Throw you up against the wall as hard as he could. I just remember hearing my mother scream, Joe, you're going to kill him. You're going to kill him. Stop it. You're going to kill him. People don't realize back in those days when Michael was growing up, kids were hit, and it was a regular thing. So I think that the idea that Michael was abused is something that's been blown way out of proportion. I don't think he realized to this day how scared scared. I mean, scared. So scared that we, I would regurgitate. Because Joe was the way he was in dealing with Michael, Michael was consequently shy. He became introverted. He had a nurturing, loving mother and a father who was Godzilla sometimes. I remember when we were about 19, maybe 20 years old and I was at the house and I asked Michael, why do you call your father Joseph? Why don't you call him dad? It was unusual for me to hear them refer to their father as Joseph or Joe and refer to their mother as mother. They could not attach themselves to their father like they wanted to. Once Michael got to Motown and he saw how the real world worked, he realized, I'm the star. And pretty soon, I'll be able to get away from my dad and strike out on my own. When Michael fired his father as his manager, it was an emotional thing. He had to cut that cord. And for Joe, it probably was viewed as a slap in the face. After all, he's the one that really found Michael Jackson. His father was very angry that he was no longer in control of Michael's career. Joe knew what he brought to the table. He knew what he had accomplished. I'm sure he wasn't pleased with it. Joe had kind of slipped away. He had started a different life in Las Vegas. I love my daddy so much. You're the best daddy in the whole world. When Michael had kids of his own, he began to think differently about Joseph. He began to think, well, you know what? My dad's been kind of a jerk, but it's not easy raising kids. Maybe Joseph did a lot of the wrong things for the right reasons, and maybe I should just give him a break. They started communicating more. Michael and Joseph had ends, uh, differences, but when it came down to father and son, there was a great love. I think you can't understand a person's relationship with his parent. I think you just have to just accept it for what it appears to be. And where Michael and Joseph was concerned, you know, it was difficult. But that doesn't mean that they didn't love each other. Breaking news. Back with the very late Catherine who is the matriarch of the family, who is the head of the money, who will be the one to take care of Michael's three children. The big shocker, of course, was the secondary custodian was Diana Ross. I don't even think Diana Ross knew she was named in this will. He had always been fascinated with Diana Ross, and she was almost a mother figure in her, within herself. And, and so he adored that quality. Diana Ross is a very good friend of the family. She's a wonderful, wonderful human being. But she is a friend. She's not family. 
The memorial was extremely uplifting, emotional, and a wonderful tribute to Michael. The entire world was watching. You could see for blocks just the racks of media networks that beaming live. And I said to myself, only Michael could have made the whole world stop. Joe was sitting in the front row at the memorial. I can't answer to why Joe didn't go on stage at the end, but it certainly didn't matter when you saw little Paris Jackson give her a short speech about her father. I just wanted to say, Ever since I was born, Daddy has been the best father you could ever imagine. She said what everybody was really trying to say. He was my dad. This was a human being. I, I don't care what you say, I lost my father. And I think it shamed everybody that had tried to make Michael all of these different things for their own purposes, good or bad. His friends that tried to make him a god, his enemies that tried to make him a demon. Paris made him a human being. And I think everybody had to say, wow. He loved his kids. And he spent the last five years of his life really devoting himself to his children. That was for you to learn about perseverance and confidence and mm. the true meaning of success, which is love. And I love you. They wanted to make sure that they were going to never be able to say to any other person, have you seen my childhood? Michael was the breadwinner at nine, and his responsibility was a lot. He didn't get a chance to play. He didn't get to shoot basketball with the brothers and to hang out, because if Michael broke a leg, that's the end of the show. You don't have a childhood, you have a business, and you are the business. As he got older, he became a young kid. You know, he sort of had that weird sort of man-child thing going for him. He always was real attracted to children. It's a funny thing about kids, people don't understand. Michael believed in their innocence and their honesty. And he liked to make kids laugh and give them the things he didn't have. Michael Jackson would surround himself with little boys. He would say, it's time to go to bed. We have to sleep. Michael said, I'll sleep on the floor, and you guys can sleep in my bed. No, 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 no. We want you to sit up here and sleep with us. So like a big kid that he was, he slept with them. Michael talked publicly about sleeping with children in his bed, certainly not in any sexual way. And in fact, he seemed pretty disgusted by the thought that he would even be capable of doing something like that. When he was asked, do you think it's anything wrong with a grown man sleeping with little boys? His innocent, pure answer was no. Michael, unfortunately, was an easy mark. And people tried to take advantage of him. There have been many disgusting statements made recently concerning allegations of improper conduct on my part. These statements about me are totally false. The first public allegations of molestation, it really tarnished Michael's image. I am hoping for a speedy end to this horrifying, horrifying experience to which I have been subjected. He settles the case for over $20 million, and it gets people talking, wait a minute, he paid out that much money? Then there must be something to this. Welcome back, Michael. May 26, 1994, smack in the middle of the child molestation allegations, Michael Jackson marries Lisa Marie Presley. Lisa Marie came into the picture really surprisingly and suddenly. She loved Michael Jackson. She was crazy about him. He could not wait to have the grandchildren of the King of Rock. He always wanted to have children. From the time when I managed him in the 80s, he would ask me questions about how I raised my own children and what I thought and what it was like. I think in the beginning, Lisa thought, mm, that may be a possibility, but they never actually slept together. And I think somewhere along the line, she realized, if we're not sleeping together, I don't want to have children with him. On January 18th, 1996, they're divorced. Didn't last very long. Michael wanted to have children very badly. And so he hooked up with Debbie Rowe. Debbie Rowe worked for Michael's dermatologist, Dr. Arnold Klein. Michael was enamored with her. When he first met her, he thought she would be a suitable mother. 
She was certainly someone who Dr. Klein recommended to Michael when Michael expressed the desire to have children and someone that both Dr. Klein and, and Michael felt very comfortable with and thought really could be trusted. As a gift to him, she agreed to have not one but two of the children. She loved him like crazy. She believed he deserved to have children. And he was so happy with the opportunity to have kids, and he let her do it. The arrangement was simple. She was going to give Michael Jackson kids. She was not going to be a part in their lives. Michael would pay her a certain amount of money to compensate her, and that was going to be it. I believe Debbie Rowe absolutely, completely, unabashedly was in love with Michael Jackson. She gave those children to Michael Jackson because that's what he wanted, and she wanted to please him. In the 1990s, he decided to, that he was going to marry her. And he did love her, don't get me wrong, but Michael never lived with Debbie Rowe. They always understood what their relationship was. After three years of marriage, Michael and Debbie divorced on October 8, 1999. Three years later, Jackson had a child with a surrogate. He raised all three children on his own. By all accounts from those around Michael, he was a really good father. Parents, you want to run? OK. They loved him. Everything was about daddy. Daddy this, daddy that. Daddy? Yeah? Thank you for giving me ice cream. You're the best daddy in the whole world, and I love you. He made sure that they always called him daddy. They never called him Michael. Not like he called his dad Joseph. He wanted his kids to think of him as daddy, and they did. You are my daddy, my only daddy. You make me happy, my skies are gray. You never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my daddy away. I love you. Are you ready to fight for your children? Do not touch me! Nobody touched you here. You just did! Don't! Are you ready to fight for your children? Are you ready to get your butt kicked? Are you Don't touch me! Debbie, are you willing to take a cash settlement for the kids? Following Michael's death, rumors circulated that Debbie Rowe may be going after custody of the children. On August 3rd, a judge made that decision. Catherine will be the person responsible for raising those children. Debbie is not going to contest Catherine Jackson's uh, guardianship, and Debbie will at least get to see the kids um, from time to time. One of the more interesting things that's come out, uh, you know, about Michael Jackson is that the children may not even be his. Some people have speculated that Arnold Klein is the father of Michael Jackson's children. Other men have been mentioned, but there is no legal standing as to these people. These three children will only know one person as daddy the rest of their life. That's Michael Jackson. He changed their diapers. He fed them. He was with them 24-7. Paris, Prince, and Blanca's father is Michael Jackson. That is where it begins. That is where it ends. All the other people, get your butt somewhere and sit down. Nearly two months after Michael Jackson's death, these court documents were filed, and the public could finally read them to kind of gauge their own judgments about what happened the night that he died. The last 12 hours of Michael's life were the most confusing hours he ever lived. Dr. Conrad Murray had been slowly trying to wean Michael Jackson off of propofol. According to the affidavit, between the hours of 1 a.m. and 5 a.m., Dr. Murray was giving Michael Jackson an assortment of drugs. It started with Valium. Those drugs didn't work, and he asked for more and more and more. Finally, at 10.40 AM, when Dr. Conrad Murray distributed the 25 milligrams of propofol, Michael Jackson went to sleep. According to the affidavit, Dr. Murray left the room for about one to two minutes to use the restroom. When he came back, Michael wasn't breathing. According to the police report, between the hour of 11.18 AM and 12.05, for 47 minutes, Conrad Murray made three phone calls. Police say that Conrad Murray found Michael Jackson unconscious at 11, and his lawyer is saying that's not the case. Murray's lawyers, they're saying that he did exactly what he should have done, that he had a patient who was involved in lots of different drugs, that Dr. Murray gave him appropriate medication, it had a bad result, but that it's not his fault. Fire paramedic 33, what is your emergency? I need an ambulance as soon as possible, sir. The whole scene around the 911 call is fascinating to me because there's a security guard on the line, not the doctor. Did anybody see him? Yes, we have a personal doctor here with him, sir. Oh, you have a doctor there? Yes, but he's not responding to anything. 
Dr. Murray should have been on the phone with 911. He should have been discussing what exactly is going on with his patient. You know, how can we, we help? How can we save this guy? Is he on the floor? Where's he at right now? He's on the bed, sir. He's on the bed. Okay, let's get him on the floor. Any school kid knows that you don't do CPR on a bed. You put him on a hard surface so that if you push down on him, you won't just get pushed back by the mattress. We don't know exactly when Michael Jackson was found dead, whether he was alive when the ambulance was called. We've heard that he was already dead when they got there. Police raided Dr. Murray's storage facility and clinic in Houston. A few days later, they did the same thing in Las Vegas. The DEA Las Vegas office is assisting DEA LA and the Los Angeles Police Department in a search warrant here at uh, Dr. Murray's office. The toxicology reports revealed that there were multiple drugs found in Michael's system when he died. Michael Jackson was someone who publicly said that I went to rehabilitation for a problem with prescription drug use, thereby telling every doctor in the universe that this is an addict. I think the whole situation surrounding Michael's death is very suspicious. There are only two people who know exactly what happened to Michael. It's Michael and Dr. Murray. Because of all that is going on, I'm afraid to return phone calls or use my email. Please, don't worry. As long as I keep God in my heart and you in my life, I will be fine. I have done all I could do. I told the truth, and I have faith the truth will prevail. On August 24th, the Los Angeles coroner's office ruled Michael Jackson's death was a homicide. On February 8th, 2010, after an eight-month investigation, prosecutors charged Conrad Murray with involuntary manslaughter in Jackson's death. Murray surrendered the same day. And counsel, wait for the reading of the complaint statement of rights. We're going to wait uh, the reading of the complaint, Judge, and just enter our plea of not guilty to that complaint. All right, not guilty plea is entered. Move this way, please. Murray was released on $75,000 bail. If convicted, he could receive a maximum four-year prison term. The case is pending. I just hope that the authorities are able to really get down to the bottom of Michael's death to find out really what happened to Michael and who's responsible. This case ain't going away anytime soon. It will be the most thorough, most complex, most documented case in American judicial history. Michael Jackson's life was so interwoven with truth and deceit. We will be learning more about the Michael Jackson death for years to come. It's so hard for the family to understand and the fans to accept. And it's, it's hard to say now that he's dead, but Michael Jackson was a drug addict. No one was really there for Mike. He died a lonely man, a very frail person. The only thing that kept him living the last few years of his life was his children. Michael's death caused chaos in the world. His fans and family is messed up, messed up. It's a tragedy that should have never happened, but it did. If people that surrounded Michael really had his best interests at heart, I know Michael would still be alive right now. He could have been saved.